All right, so we've found that the idea of an equilibrium constant shows up when we consider the reactants and products in a reaction to be ideal gases. The next step is to understand what the equilibrium constant looks like when the reactants and products are not ideal gases. So what's certainly still true for a system that's at equilibrium is this equilibrium condition. The stoichiometric coefficients times the chemical potentials have to add up to zero. Or for a concrete example, for the reaction we've been talking about, chemical potential of the reactants, H2 and Br2, have to add up to the same thing as the chemical potential of the products, two molecules of HBr. So even if the gases are not ideal gases, or in other cases, even if they're not gases at all, what's still true about the chemical potential is that the chemical potential is the partial molar energy, uh, in particular the partial molar Helmholtz free energy under conditions of constant temperature and volume. So remembering the um, uh, thermodynamic connection formula for the Helmholtz free energy, A is minus kT log Q. The derivative of that Helmholtz free energy with respect to N, the only thing that depends on N is this partition function. So we can say the chemical potential is minus kT d log Q dN at constant T and V. And that works out to be um, minus kT log of little q, the molecular partition function divided by n. That's an equation we've seen before. d log q dn is equal to log q over n. But just to remind you where that comes from, because it's been a little while since we've seen it, if we have a bunch of independent and identical molecules that are indistinguishable, the partition function of those n molecules is 1 over n factorial because of the indistinguishability times the single molecule partition function raised to the nth power. Log of that uh, full system partition function is log of n factorial with a negative sign because n factorial was in the denominator and then the single molecule partition function raised to the n power the log is n multiplying the single molecule partition function n log q. If we remember Stirling's approximation then the log n factorial becomes n log n minus n and the negative sign converts that to minus n log n plus n and then we still have the n log q term. So this is what we have for the log of the system's partition function. If I take the derivative with respect to n, which is what I want here, then the derivative of n with respect to n is just 1. Uh, but uh, product rule tells me I also need to take the derivative of log n with respect to n, and that gives me a 1 over n. Derivative of n just gives me 1, and derivative of n log q just gives me log q. So we have four different terms in this derivative. Luckily for us, two of those cancel. This minus n times 1 over n cancels the plus 1. Those two terms cancel. I've just got a log q and a minus log n. The difference between those two logs is the log of the quotient. So that's equal to log little q divided by n. So that's where we get this expression that the derivative of the full, the log of the full partition function with respect to n is just the same as the log of the single molecule partition function divided by n. So the net result so far is the chemical potential of any individual species is minus kT log of the partition function of one molecule of that species divided by how many molecules of that species we have. So that's the expression that we can go back and plug into either equilibrium condition, either the general equilibrium condition or It'll make more sense, I think, if we start with a specific case for H2 and Br2. So let's take this H2Br2 equilibrium condition and insert our new result for the uh, chemical potential. So the chemical potential of the reactants have to add up to the same thing as the chemical potential of the products. So we're going to work in the specific H2Br2 case over here on the uh, right side of the page. So chemical potential of H2 and chemical potential of Br2 have to add up to chemical potential of two HBrs. So our new result says chemical potential is minus kT log of Q over N. We do that once for H2, once for Br2, and twice for HBr, because we have two molecules of HBr as products. There's a negative and a kT in each of these terms. So if we drop the minus kT, we've just got, just got this sum of logs, log Q over N plus log Q over N, on the, right, on the left side, and then twice log q over n on the right side for different species. The sum of these two logs is the log of the product, 
so log of q times q over n times n. And on the right side, twice the log of q over n for the products is the log of that quantity squared. So the q's and n's become squared. Now I've just got log of something equals log of something. So if I exponentiate, I just get q's over n's equal q over n's. If I then rearrange those q's and n's, getting all the q's on the right-hand side, so I'll bring that qh2 and qbr2 over to the right in the denominator, and the nhbr squared over on the right side, I'll move over to the left, and that shows up in the numerator. So what I get is this ratio of numbers of molecules of hbr squared over the number of molecules of h2, number of molecules of br2. That's equal to the partition function of hbr squared over partition function of H2, partition function of Br2. That's the equivalent now of the equilibrium condition. Notice that since we weren't talking about pressures of ideal gases, we don't have any pressures in this expression, but it does tell us still something about how many HBr and B2, Br2 and H2 molecules uh, there are and what the relationship between those amounts of those molecules are in relation to, to this uh, ratio of partition functions. If we then go back and do the same exact thing for the general case, so not for H2 and Br2, but for any reaction where the stoichiometric coefficients times the chemical potentials have to add up to zero. Algebra is exactly the same, it just feels a little more abstract since we're not writing down individual species. So some of the chemical potentials has to be zero. Each one of those chemical potentials is minus kT log of Q over N and each of those chemical potentials gets multiplied by a stoichiometric coefficient. Again, drop the kts from both sides of the equation and I just get zero is equal to the sum of stoichiometric coefficients times log of q's over n's. New multiplying by this log is the same as log of q over n raised to the power nu. So I'm just using the log rules here. Now, what we have is a sum of several different log terms. So that's the log of a product. So this is the logarithm of the product of q over n, q over n, q over n, each raised to the stoichiometric coefficients. If I undo the log now, e to the 0 on the left side hand side gives me 1, e to the log on the right hand side just drops the log and I have 1 is equal to this product of q's raised to stoichiometric coefficients over n's raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. If I move all the n's to the left hand side, like I did in the first example, then I have the product of a bunch of n's raised to their stoichiometric coefficients is equal to the product of a bunch of partition functions raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So this is the equivalent. These two statements are equivalent to each other. If I can manage to draw an arrow correctly. This is a specific example of that statement for H2Br2 forming HBr. Over here, we have the more general statement. Remembering that the stoichiometric coefficients are negative, all this statement says is number of product molecules divided by number of each reactant molecules, again, raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, products on top, reactants on bottom. That's equal to the same ratio of partition functions, products on top, reactants on the bottom, raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. That's exactly what this expression says. Just like in the case for ideal gases, the uh, general statement, so I'll go ahead and put a box around this statement, that's our general result for when a system is in equilibrium, this relationship between how many molecules of each type there are and this product of the partition functions. The partition functions at a given temperature for a given species is just are just numbers, so this product QHBR squared over QH2QBR2, that's just a collection of numbers that we call the equilibrium constant. So uh, for any given reaction, if we know what the reactants are, what the products are, if we know the partition functions, then we can calculate this equilibrium constant. And then similar to the case for ideal gas, that equilibrium constant is some ratio of products over reactants, but the more general statement is uh, that it's number of molecules of products divided by number of molecules of reactants as given by this expression. How we use this equation will become a little more clear after we do a few examples with it.